Is a shilling heading to 8890? <laughs> Please say it is. It will make me feel good. I wouldn't want to make it feel <laughs> good <laughs> at the expense of the country. Uh, yes. We do believe that there will be a marginal weakening uh, on the shilling between now and year end. Of course, uh, naturally, given that uh, the central bank recently reduced its uh, r base rate, it's, it's, it's a natural uh, reaction. There's also been quite a lot of liquidity on the market, as we've seen the most recent uh, bond issues and T-bill issues have been overwhelmingly oversubscribed, just uh, leading, alluding to the fact that there's a lot of money on the market. Uh, Central Bank has been very active on the repos, trying to mop up this liquidity, Yes, but uh, those are very short term and it ends up bringing this money back. Uh, on a good note, at least, there's the 20-year uh, bond issue that uh, closes today that uh, we, should, we should definitely see some very big subscription on, uh, on that offer. Try and explain this for me. The, the, the IMF has given us this, this bust this 10 billion shilling loan over the past week or so, mm. which ideally should be giving the shilling a bit of a boost, but it doesn't look like it. 85.75 um, is not exactly very stable. Actually, it's uh, even even more than a week. Uh, yes. This is money that has been uh, disbursed over uh, most of November. Yes. Uh, but it's, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, call it very substantial uh, mm -hmm. to the point that it can uh, effectively counteract uh, the amount of liquidity, yes. Kenya shilling liquidity around, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the two percent drop in the interest uh, rates. So it's still very likely that that slide will be happening. We, we will see a bit. Maybe more. not as steep, or how, how steep do you think? Not not as steep as you think. You don't you don't, you don't want to commit to. This. You're just saying it's not as steep as I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Fair enough. Let's talk about the shilling. Let's talk rather, rather about equities. The NS20 share index yesterday very marginally down 0.19%. Mm -hmm. What stood out for you from the market? Uh, I mean, there wasn't uh, there weren't any big uh, names in the in the in the top losers or mm -hmm. top gainers. Most of the movement was among the big caps, uh, notably as usual, Safaricom, EABL, uh, Equity Bank. Mm -hmm. There was nothing very spectacular, and the, as such, the market was slightly down. Today, we will definitely still see activity uh, among those because uh, th these are the counters that the foreign investors uh, prefer yes. due to liquidity, and that's where they're coming in. And we've seen uh, net net foreign inflows even despite um, what happened over the weekend. So there's still positive sentiment on our market. Um, it's been a good performer all year. So I think we'll still see some uh, very good trading on those. What is that balance like right now between the foreign investors and the domestic investors? Well, over the past few days, we'd say that uh, it's been net foreign inflows. Uh, mm -hmm. Foreigners are more active than the locals, uh, taking up between 50 and 55% of uh, market activity. Let's talk about the Centum investment briefing that's happening right now. Admittedly, we don't have all the information. Yeah. We're just piecing this together from reports out of that press briefing. But what I hear is one that uh, James Moore is increasing his stake in the company, which is always good, right? Yes. When the CEO has confidence in the company. Yes, it's, it's definitely a, a show of his confidence and the fact that he's there to stay and he believes in uh, the strategy that they're putting down uh, for the next couple of years. They're looking to invest uh, across East Africa, Yes. Uh, looking for opportunities in Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, uh, diversify their portfolio a little more, looking mm -hmm. for more opportunities in private equity. That's uh, really been uh, one of their biggest spaces anyway. Uh, listed equities, they're mm -hmm. not too, going to be too big on that, yes. uh, notably even as per their last financial year, they were trying to reduce on that and look for better opportunities outside the listed stocks. What we're hearing about 90% unlisted equities and only 10%. Correct. And mm -hmm. also, uh, they're going to definitely be looking for opportunities in real estate. Yes. Yes. And uh, we're talking about the, 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 the projecting of a 30 billion shilling portfolio by 2014, which appears very optimistic. Definitely very mm -hmm. optimistic, especially, I mean, uh, East Africa is, 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 is going to be a powerhouse mm -hmm. uh, economically in the next few years. So it's, it's, it's very well informed what they're doing. Let's talk about Kenjin also. We rely a lot on hydroelectricity, which makes our overall um, power, power um, bills very high. But they're talking about these 14 different temporary uh, plants that are using geothermal. Mm. So ideally, that means um, our power is cheaper. But also, what does this mean for the stock, if anything? Uh, for the stock, Kenjin, I believe, is a very it's a long-term play. Mm. I mean, the, it's a utility company, uh, biggest power producer in the country. It's definitely a very long-term play. However, uh, the prospects are good. Mm -hmm. Kenya has got uh, some of the biggest deposits of uh, geothermal potential, uh, amounting to about 7,000 megawatts uh, available yes. for us to tap. Uh, what they're doing now is uh, trying to take some small steps towards trying to get uh, less reliant on thermal power because uh, diesel is very expensive. In fact, if you compare 
the cost of producing power using diesel versus yes. uh, geothermal. Mm -hmm. Geothermal comes in at about a third of the cost. So what they're doing is setting up a few um, short-term plants. These are called wellheads, mm -hmm. where they will be able to set these up in a span of uh, six months over the next two years. Uh, whereas a typical power plant takes even up to 10 years to set up. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to definitely start seeing a decline in the cost of uh, power and uh, less reliance again on hydro, which is uh, subject to rainfall. Which the only problem to. about this geothermal exploitation exploration is that it's normally very expensive uh, uh, when you begin the yes. putting up those power plants, which take a lot of time and take a lot of money. Yes. And how does this translate therefore to Kenya Power, which buys power from Kengen? I mean, uh, first of all, by going through uh, the shorter route of using these, uh, these wellheads, mm -hmm. uh, power will be able to uh, be produced in a much shorter time. So we'll start seeing power off these in the next six months because they don't have to wait until the entire plant is completed. So there won't be a very big uh, direct uh, cost loaded onto uh, the charge on uh, Kenya, Kenya Power in terms of uh, the cost of electricity. Also, Kenzen has invited a lot of um, private uh, type investors yes. to come and uh, take up some equity in some of these uh, projects that they're doing to uh, use, utilize more of the geothermal uh, potential. Can I link this to eventually an even lower inflation because if our power bills are are not as expensive, though admittedly that this depends on where the, fuel, the crude prices are because they use a lot of um, sometimes diesel in production of mm -hmm. this, then we'll have even lower inflation than where we are currently. Over the next, uh, I mean it would take some time for, yes. for it to trickle in, uh, at least a year, but definitely this will have a very big impact on, on uh, the price of energy, which is a very big element in uh, computing our inflation numbers.